All right, so today we're going to analyze some fantastic music from John Williams, Atli Orverson, Marest Musorski, Peter Tchaikovsky, and Bote Orchestra is here to play some examples of the voicing for us. Welcome to the world of orchestral music! Hey guys, it's Vlad Podgoretsky here again, and today we have a new tutorial for you, and we're going to talk about low registers, this, because this is the main, most important part for writing for orchestra. Okay, we're going to keep working with the same melody as in previous tutorial, and let me remind you how it sounds. But this time, let's play it in low register with cellos and basses in triads. It should sound gorgeous. All right, guys, so uh, I'm going to give you all secrets away right now. So the general rule of thumb is not to use imperfect consonant and dissonant intervals in the low register. Why? Uh, because lots of harmonic environments, uh, you know, before and after the interval. But having said that, I have started to think, am I right? Is it so? Maybe it is just a common knowledge written in thick and dusty orchestration books and composers just, you know, avoid risky voicing combinations since then. Anyway, let's open John Williams' score to explore how he deals with the voicing in low register. Yep, he is absolute virtuoso and his music and orchestrations is beyond perfect. Uh, you know, it's a good example for us to study. Uh, so, it would be sued from Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone. Our examples came from the opening number, Hedwig's theme. Let's take a listen. First of all, wow, what a gorgeous music and profound and wise orchestration. I love John Williams' writing. We want to know how John Williams used cello and contrabass section and how he deal with low frequency. I looked through the entire suite and I was really surprised. Most of the time, John Williams does not use other intervals than perfect octave. Cello plays the bass line and contrabasses double it one octave lower. Yes, that is what the orchestration book says, and Maestro really take this role literally, and as you can hear, it sounds great. You know, when you write music for the film, most of the time orchestra does not have time to rehearse your music before recording. And if you want to get good quality recording, you need to use solid orchestration solutions and Perfect octave doubling and no other intervals in low register, that is what we call 100% great result guaranteed. But how about classical academic score? Let's take a look at one of my favorite orchestration examples, Picture at an Exhibition, written for the piano by Russian composer Modest Mussorgsky in 1874, and it has become widely popular orchestra suite in Maurice Sorvel orchestration. The first example is from the piece, The Promenade. It's the opening music of the whole suite. You can see in the climax of this piece, Ravel uses octave doubling too, and he gets nice and clean low frequency sound. This is the beginning of the 10 piece suite, and he wants to make the first piece as simple as possible. Alright, we have a good and a reliable solution for our bass line. Cello and contrabasses plays an octave. 
But we are not gathered here for simple solutions and we want to push some boundaries. So let's check other versions of voicing in the low register. And Bowtie Orchestra is here to help us by playing examples for our tutorial. And by the way, don't forget to check our website, moscow-scoring.com. We offer professional remote recording for you guys. So it's all remotely, it's beautiful. All right, let's play our melody in low register uh, with different voicing and see what we like better. We will start with the third doubling. No, not for me. I don't like how it sounds. It's very muddy. As you can see in this example, Scantro Bass is doubling the cellos one octave lower, and that would make this voicing kind of unusable. Nice. But what classic genius Tchaikovsky would say about this kind of statement? Let's open his Symphony No. 6 scores. He thought about the symphony as a requiem and he decided that it will be the final symphony in his career and actually he died several weeks after the premiere of the symphony. Isn't it weird? Ugh. By the way guys, it took only one week for him to write the piano version of the first and part of the second movements of the symphony. How about that? It's about like 27 minutes of awesome music. Can you imagine? All right. The example is from the first movement. As you can see, Tchaikovsky used thirds in the contra octave. Mistake? Let's find out. Yep, this guy really knows what he want to get. He is writing Requiem and he looks for dark and low register effects. Thirds and Contra Octave is a good choice for that. It does sound a bit harsh and muddy, but he is aware of it. Tchaikovsky leaves space, like five octaves of emptiness between contrabasses and violins for overtone series coming from the contrabasses thirds. To make it clear that it is a cool effect of beautiful and clean sounding violins against the low and roaring sound of contrabasses. Amazing! Bravo maestro! But if we want to use thirds in low register, we need to reorchestrate it anyway. If you need harsh effect for dark moments in your music, use it as it is, but leave space for overtones like Tchaikovsky did. But for other moments, we need to find another solution. Okay, I have an idea. Let's move the thirds up an octave and make them play in unison with cellos. That should help us to remove all this unnecessary low end and make the melody sound loud and clear. Yes, I think it works. So we we solved that. I think it's I think it's what we need. So let's take a listen both of these uh, examples back to back, so we can compare and see what you prefer better. I think you can use this doubling with thirds for cello part playing solo with no contrabasses doubling. It would sound very dark and quite beautiful, but if you want to put any other voices on top, it will make huge harmonic mess and you will not be able to hear this slow melody at all. But sometimes the harmonic mess is exactly what you need and the contrabass and cello section would really give you a lot of possibilities to deliver dark and horror sound to your audience. Which reminds me of the soundtrack of the movie A Single Shot, written by brilliant composer Artie Orverson and orchestrated for chamber orchestra 
by yours truly. This is a very cool horror suspense movie and Atli wrote a beautiful music using a lot of extended techniques for this soundtrack. We had seven cellos and three contrabasses to make all low strings effect and here's a couple of examples of the final mix. of going on in this score, but today we talk about low register, and we have nice cluster played by three contrabasses where two of them plays tremolo in minor second, and the third one plays trill on the same notes. Basically we wanted to make shaky and stable low drone with no distinctive pitch. In the second example, we wanted to make another low frequency bubbling effect with no distinctive pitch again. As you can see, I asked musicians to play chaotic rapid movements in given range, and one contrabass plays constant trill to glue all this texture all together. As you can see, low distinctive musical noise could be very useful in a film music writing. And an orchestra could be a great source of cool sound design effects for your music. Alright, let's sum up. So octaves between cellos and contrabasses, you know, like John Williams style, would be a solid go-to solution. Also contrabasses and cellos plays in unison, also good, but contrabasses would sound a bit harsh in cello range. Thirds in the great octave could be very beautiful, but you need to empty mid-frequency range. You know, like in the symphony number no. 6, Tchaikovsky style. Or solo mode, it's always great, and our ear can hear these great octaves notes pretty well. Low frequency extending techniques. Yes, just open your mind and break all orchestration rules. Have fun, guys. Bad and weird sound is what you are looking for. You know, like thirds in contra octave is no good for nice tonal music. Also, if you want to build a chord, do not use thirds in the low register. No, no. All right, if you like this tutorial, please subscribe. And if you need remote recording, please check out our website. Thank you and stay tuned for new tutorials. Hey, I would be happy to know how you deal with low frequency in your orchestra or MIDI writing, and let me know in the comment section below this video. Alright, next time we will keep exploring the low register voicing. We will examine more of John Williams' scores and also Mahler and Rimsky-Korsakov waiting for us. Cheers, guys!